So please, if you just stand up, everyone. We're going to optimize the flow in here and in me. And just follow my lead. Yeah, just start moving. Breathing in through your nose, out like a sigh. I can do a little bit of this. Pretty good song, huh? It's Herbie Hancock. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Great. Keep breathing. <sighs> You're doing great. <sighs> One more. Thank you. Please have a seat. Herbie Hancock, stars in your eyes. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you a story about my journey from uh, conventional science to the study of consciousness and what I call the full human potential. Um, I'm, I started my career in microbiology, and 13 years ago, I had just come home from doing cancer research at the Salk Institute in San Diego. And I had started working on my PhD on HIV vaccine development here in Stockholm at the Karolinska Institute. When I, one gray February morning, was hit by the realization that I felt that we were only looking at a fraction of the human being. An important fraction, but still. I felt the human being was all of that, and all of that played a part in if we were healthy or sick, happy or depressed. So, this made me really depressed. Because all of a sudden, I could no longer fully believe in what I was working with. My inside was just going like, no. And my outside was trying to negotiate, trying to finish my PhD. Like, only two more years, come on! Um, but this inner conflict, this became too great. And it manifested itself as physical disease in my body. So I was really forced to stop my career in science. Since then, I've continued my research, but within my own company, investigating what is a whole human being. And how do these parts interact so that we can learn how to live more fully. I've used my very analytical eyes, trained in science, but I broadened my perspective. And, I think most importantly, I've used my intuition every step of the way. And we'll get back to intuition in a bit. My research has been based on working as a therapist, combining coaching and massage, or body work, um, and after about two years of doing this, I could see that all my clients were changing like in a certain direction. And I started to be able to describe this shift. It seemed like they all became more themselves. And it was easier for them to make decisions about how they wanted to live their lives. They described how they felt more energetic, they felt more happy and peaceful inside, and their general state of health seemed to improve. I felt like they were moving, let's see here, from being more or less out of balance with themselves, more into being in balance with themselves. My research has also included my own healing process and my investigation of my full potential. And on this journey, I've tried very, very many of the methods of alternative medicine out there. Everything from acupuncture and Ayurveda to crystal healing and aromatherapy. And what I noticed along the way is that all of these different methods, in their own way, are helping people from being 
more or less out of balance, more into a state of balance, a state that I also have come to call flow. Because it seemed like we have better access to this flow of life. <clears throat> so, from my current perspective, I would suggest that when we get sick, and especially if we get really sick, I would say that instead of stopping at just removing the physical symptom of disease, I think we should help ourselves to rebalance on both the physical level, on the chemical level, on the mental, emotional, behavioral levels. And we can do this systematically, we can do it ourselves, and we can make use of the methods available out there. In the middle there, you see I, I wrote the word soul with little fnips around it, because, you know, nobody knows what the soul is. It has been referred to as our spirituality. When I uh, lecture in companies, I refer to it as our deepest values and our sense of meaning and purpose in this life. Yeah, not to scare anyone. We'll get back to the soul <laughs> in a little bit. I'm building a case here. I don't know if you're <laughs> noticing. Um, <clears throat> I've also investigated this that we call uh, creativity. And my take on creativity is pretty much like this. Creativity is a perfect balance between intuition and reason. And this is Jonas Salk, the inventor of the polio vaccine. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I draw it like this, like it would be the right and left side of the brain, but I don't know if that's an oversimplification, and I don't want to upset any neuroscientists here, because this is just my intuitive feeling. So this is the way that I draw it. Um, this is more symbolic, but it also feels more right. To me, it feels like the intuition is closer to our center. And the rational intellect is this amazing tool that we have, a little bit closer to the surface. I like to describe the rational intellect as a supercomputer. It's very linear, it's very ordered, it's, uh, it's kind of like when we learn something, when we have an experience, we store that information on that rational hard drive. It's our programming. It's how we see ourselves and the world. In a big sense, it's helping us to function out there. But I also feel that there are viral programs in this computer based on fears, and they're actually stopping us from fully being ourselves. Intuition, on the other hand, is talking to us in a different way than the rational intellect. Not so linear. It feels like our inner voice. Very often it comes through the body, it feels like a gut feeling or the voice of our heart. Sometimes it's like a clear insight, but most often when we are connected to the body. Intuition seems to um, point us in a direction of what feels like a good idea. And it can also tell us what feels like a bad idea. And somehow it does this before the rational intellect understands what's going on. So here we can either use the rational intellect to block that intuition, saying like, that's a crazy idea. You know, nobody's done that before. The programming, <laughs> fears, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, or we can use the rational intellect to actually value that intuition and investigate that direction it's pointing us in. Become curious about it. Because here's the point. As I see it, intuition is not separate from our rational intellect. It's more like from that center point, intuition has an overview over the whole rational intellect, over that whole hard drive. And it can like combine things in new ways and present it. This is what I call creativity. This is what I call innovation. Plus, at least for me, it seems like when I'm closer to my center, intuition can help me connect to what feels like a big internet from where I can download information from time to time. Almost like in the movie Matrix, I don't know if you saw it. <laughs> the problem is that when we stress, when we get out of balance of ourselves, we end up closer to that surface. We start living in that rational intellect. We start, look, surface. Yeah, we start living in the programming, 
closer to our fears. And there's not a whole lot of creativity there. So, oops, Albert Einstein is uh, talking about the same thing like this. I'm going to leave you for a few seconds so you can read it. <coughs> yeah, it's pretty on point, I think. So, to finish this off, to sum this up, I mean, this is my study of life. I'm more of a philosopher these days. But I'm very systematic about it, because I was trained in science. So my research so far is telling me that for us to be in our full potential as human beings, we need to include that part of us that has been referred to as our spirituality. And we can do that completely without mixing ourselves into religion. We can do it through starting to listening more closely to our inner voice, our intuition, our deepest values, whatever feels like our heart and our soul. Only then, it seems, are we in contact with our full creative potential. And we can start creating solutions in our own lives, in the laboratory, in the office. We can create health within ourselves. And I am sure that we can create peace on this earth. Thank you. Namaste. Yes. <sighs>